There are three characteristics that we look at when trying to identify and describe flowering plants, the angiosperms. The first characteristic are the leaves, the shape of the leaves, the shape of the edge of the leaves, um, and the features of the leaves. The second characteristic are flowers, the third are the fruit. We'll look at flowers and fruit later, but in this video we'll look primarily at leaf shape and a couple other characteristics of leaves that we use in helping us to identify a particular plant. The first leaf shape is perhaps the most common, at least here, and that is an elliptical shape, a shape that is roughly elliptical. The key when trying to work out a leaf shape is to look at the general overall shape of the leaf. They're not worry too much about the drip tip at the end of the leaf. Many tropical leaves have a drip tip to allow water to run off the leaf and prevent the leaf from becoming too wet and molding or mildewing. And so they'll have a drip tip. So discounting the drip tip, what is the general shape of the leaf? That's what we look at. And these leaves on this Volcameria nermis are roughly elliptical. A little narrower than elliptical is a lanceolate, shaped like an ancient Roman lance. This is a narrower, longer leaf than the elliptical. This leaf is somewhat elliptical, but it's a bit wider towards the base of the leaf, towards the stem. This is a shape known as ovate, or egg-shaped, but in botany we use the word ovate. This too is an ovate shaped leaf here on a Premnoserata folia. Roughly speaking, uh, excluding the drip tip, it's an ovate shaped leaf. This Terminalia catapa is also ovate, but the wide part of the leaf is away from the stem. The stem is called a petiole in botany, and when the wide part of a leaf is away from the petiole, we prefix the name with the letters OB, ab. So this is an ab ovate leaf. This gardenia titensis is also ab ovate. This Marimia peltata has a circular shape. It's round when looked at from straight above. That shape has the name orbicular in leaf morphology in the world of leaf shapes and botany. Another common leaf shape is chordate. Chordate means heart-shaped. This hibiscus tiliaceus has a chordate leaf shape. This Piper methysticum, a sockow plant, also has a chordate leaf shape. It has a heart-shaped leaf, and this can be seen too in Ipomea littoralis, a heart-shaped leaf, chordate, a very common leaf type seen on many plants. Another leaf shape often seen is palmate. Palmate leaves are seen on uh, cassava plants, tapioca out here. They're also seen on the papaya tree leaf. Palmate means shaped like a hand, hand shape or palm shaped. Leaves that have veins in parallel that are lined up in a line are referred to as linear leaves. This Helenia speciosa ginger plant has a linear leaf. This is often a characteristic of many of the monocot plants. They, have, they will have a linear leaf. This leaf shape is known as deeply lobed. There really isn't a shape. This is a breadfruit tree, uh, Artocarpus altilis, and this is referred to as deeply lobed. It doesn't really have a particular shape to speak of. Centella asiatica has a reniform shape. That means kidney-shaped. The shape of the leaf is reniform, roughly kidney-shaped, so to speak. The aeroids and members of the family have a leaf shape that's known as sagittate. They're referred to as sagittate because of the shape, particular shape of the base leaf, the two horns at the bottom. This is a compound leaf on the Sana alata, 
but the leaflets are roughly oblong. They have parallel straight edges. Chromalina odorata has, ignoring the edges, which we'll come back to, has a triangular shape known as deltoid, or as a deltoid shape. Here, too, in the Macaranga carolinensa, we can see a deltoid shape to the leaf. Sometimes the manner in which the petiole, the leaf stem, attaches to the leaf is also an important identification characteristic. When the leaf stem attaches to the bottom of the leaf, as seen in the Macaranga carolinensa and here in the Marimia peltata, that is called peltate attachment and that is also considered a leaf morphology characteristic. One final area of leaf description is that of the margins of the leaf, the edge of the leaf. This is considered a dentate uh, leaf margin. You can see these are somewhat dentate, a little bit crenulate. In this class we're not going to worry a lot about leaf margins, but leaf margins are also a characteristic of a leaf. This is a crenulate or curved leaf margin here on the Centella asiatica. And a um, leaf margin that is smooth with no teeth of any sort is called entire. So this Terminalia catapa has an entire leaf margin. As I noted, in this particular course we're not going to dwell on some of these finer points, but if you do go on in botany, these are some of the areas in which you have more learning to do. So that's a bit of a look at leaf shape and uh, leaf, the characteristics of a leaf that can help us describe a particular plant. Later we'll look at the flowers and the fruit, and once you can describe the flowers, the fruit, and the leaves, you can often create a fairly accurate written description of what that plant looks like.